Well, welcome to the program, Christiane. Great to have you here. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here myself. I just always start with asking the question is, how did you come to Treasury and why did you choose Treasury as your career? You know, um, I fell into Treasury and I find um, there's quite a few people who have never heard of Treasury and fall into it um, and then learn to love it the same way I did. And so um, I was offered a role, um, a new opportunity in Treasury. I was not very familiar with, um, it was a new company, not very familiar with them and um, tried it out and was like, wow, this is, this is the place to be. Um, it, for me, Treasury has always been um, much more strategic um, very project-based. Um, you're you're going to have different aspects of treasury. Um, cash management can be a little bit more tactical sometimes. Um, I started in capital markets and um, that was much more project-based, which is much more in line with the, the way I like to work. Um, and so found it, um, went to another company and tried some different things, but realized I want to do treasury. And so I've been in treasury ever since. And just for the listeners, um, so your background is you started with KPMG um, in the valuations area, spent a couple of years with them after grad school, um, moved to Southern Company um, yep. in a senior treasury analyst role, um, then spent six years with Bell South Corp or AT&T, um, climbing through the ranks there before a, a longer stint of eight years with Encore Electric Delivery. Um, you then spent a couple of years as the, the treasury director at Dr. Pepper uh, Snapple Group. Um, and then a year with uh, Lamb Weston, and then more recently, the last four years, you've been with Black Hills Energy as the assistant treasurer reporting into the controller. So um, over that journey, Christiane, what would you say would be the highlights from your perspective? Um, you know, it, it's interesting for me, sometimes the highlights are very small and sometimes they're really big. And, and, and so um, I still remember um, stepping stones in my career where I took initiative and tried something new and it really worked out for me. Um, and um, the satisfaction I got from um, very, very early in my career, um, creating some process documentation to help new, new employees at KPMG learn how to do valuations. Um, and I took that initiative. It was a very small thing for me to do, um, but I found a problem, I solved it. And I, I can tell you that um, not only did the new employees who used it, but our partner really appreciated it. And so I get a lot of satisfaction from finding those. Um, you know, I, I love finding the, the ways to make things better and faster and easier. Um, so continuous improvement for me is, is huge. Um, I, I think one thing that I really learned in my current role um, and was a highlight was becoming a witness for a rate review. And so a witness for a rate review for a regulated utility um, essentially has to uh, defend and explain all of these co uh, treasury concepts to um, your utility commissions to help them understand how to set rates. And so it's an extremely important um, part of the process at any regulated utility and um, having to succinctly write and then also be able to verbally explain on the witness stand um, these concepts and help them understand what is our cost of debt? How does cost of debt work? How do we approach capital structure? Um, how do we issue debt? Um, what is, um, you know, why is our pension cost the way it is? Why is it decreased over time or increased over time? And, um, and so getting that comfort level of being able to do that very quickly, and I, I wouldn't know if I would say quickly and easily, but um, getting that experience and the confidence around it um, for me was huge um, because that's something that is always gonna go with me um, as far as learning goes. And you talk there about regulated utilities. It's obviously very different from some of the other industries that you've worked in. How has Treasury differed in, in the different industries you've been exposed to? So Treasury, um, as I mentioned before, in a regulated utility, we do get involved a lot more with um, our regulatory filings and helping um, that team understand Treasury itself. I would say regulated utilities, um, 
are going to approach um, risk a little bit differently. Um, I've worked for consumer product companies, telecom, and um, they're all gonna approach risk just a little bit differently um, and how they view risk, um, how they might um, manage risk with derivatives um, and um, how they might um, uh, finance their, their company. And so um, regulated utilities and telecom companies, those, those companies um, are very capital intensive. They're long life assets. You're gonna, you're more likely to go out with much longer debt um, and have a little bit more debt than you would um, with a um, consumer products. You're also going to approach certain decisions a little bit differently because of the way regulation is set up. Um, so it's not the same for telecom as much as it, is, as it might be for a regulated utility where you are managing to a specific capital structure, um, where most utilities might be a little bit higher rated um, than say your consumer products um, when it comes to the rating agencies. So um, I would say there's a lot of similarities and, and I have fairly easily crossed over, um, but you have to know enough to understand the differences and to, to ask the right questions. And I think that's a really good point, Christiane, is at the end of the day, they're just slightly different levers, aren't they? Like it's all the mm -hmm. same. Treasury is essentially the same, but mm -hmm. in a regular utility, you're pulling on a lever around long-term debt um, and rating agencies a lot more than you are in a consumer products business. And this is, I guess, something I talk about a lot with, uh, with my listeners and, and with clients is, at the end of the day, treasury is treasury is treasury, but in different companies, you'll do different parts of that at different times far more. Um, I, I personally believe that you can switch across, and I agree with what you've just said there, that you know, making that move, it's just learning the jargon, understanding which levers that you're pulling and how that works, um, but making the move across should be a relatively easy transition, as long as you've got people in the business who understand the business that can teach you. Absolutely, 100% agree. What about networking, Christiane? How, how have you approached networking throughout your career and what's your advice to the listeners? Um, so one of the great things about a regulated utility, um, but I would say that this crosses over to all treasury, um, but even more so with a regulated utility because you're, you're not competing with each other so much. Um, you can really talk to other treasury teams. And I do that, I did that even when I worked with consumer product companies and building those relationships um, across treasuries and sharing of information when you can um, has been a great way for me to um, not only develop contacts, um, you're working you know, not only with um, external consultants like your bankers, um, you, may have, you may work with actuaries as well, um, so you're, you're constantly managing relationships and building those relationships. Um, so, you know, I encourage folks um, always get involved, um, get to know the other treasury folks in your town, in your city. And um, if you go to a conference, meet those people because those are the people that not only are you gonna be able to, to talk through potential um, questions you might have, let's say they've got experience with something you might not that your company is looking at, they can give you some great feedback. Um, and so it should always be about finding those relationships um, and, and look across companies. What about mentors, Christian? Have they played a part in your career so far? I would say absolutely. Um, more on a, uh, I, I would say, informal basis. Um, the great thing about certain mentors, and I've got a, a couple of them that I'm talking to currently um, that I work with. Um, what's great is um, finding those people, um, especially if they're outside of, of Treasury or your area, um, they, they do a wonderful job of really challenging how you think. Um, and there's an exercise you can do. It's a video you watch and you're, you're told to count the number of times people pass a, a ball. Um, and you watch this video and you count the number of times. And um, the, the question then at the end is not how many times was the ball passed, it's, it's all about the gorilla that walked through the whole video that you completely missed because you were so focused on one thing and one thing only, the passing of the ball. Um, and, and a mentor does, is great 
at helping you see those things that maybe you're not focusing on that you really should be. What's the one thing that you probably know now that you wish you'd been told early on in your career when you were starting out that you'd like to pass on to the listeners? I would say um, take ownership of your development. Um, and so I think that development often gets misunderstood as going to conferences or taking a class and it's really not about that. And I think people are learning that but taking more ownership of what you want. Um, don't be afraid to ask for things. Um, ask to be on a project, ask to learn. It may not be that exciting of a project, um, but sometimes those projects or those, those extra tasks that you're asked to do are going to open a whole different world for you. Um, I learned um, when I was with Encore, I took on um, pension. Pension was something I had no experience with. Um, and I, it's something I took on and had to really learn um, and, and learn on my own. And I, I did it not really understanding how much I would actually find it super interesting um, and love it. And so um, some of the, the pension work I do now is just so much, so interesting to me. And so I'm so glad that I took that on. I, I um, I asked to be involved. I did some of my own learning to get there and to get up to speed. Um, and so I think that the more you own your development and don't wait around for somebody to say, hey, how about this? Um, the more you're going to learn and the more you're gonna progress. I totally agree with that. I think that taking ownership is, is absolutely up to you. And there's so many different paths you can take in treasury that you, you need to know what you want to do uh, and, and part of that is talking to mentors or talking to uh, other people in Treasury at conferences to understand what the options are and then deciding on the path. I, I often talk to candidates when they, you know, when they're coming to me to look for a job and, they, and you say, well, what do you want? And they don't know. And part of the problem with that is if you don't know what your options are, then you don't really know the path that you're going to take. And one of the beauties of this podcast is it lets people realise there's many, many different ways to get to the top role. Um, and to become a treasurer, and there's no mm -hmm. right way. It's just really about what you want to do and, and picking the right path uh, for what you're after. So totally agree with that. And, and part of that is owning your development or owning the path that you're going to take. Absolutely. I would, I would also just highlight, sometimes you just have to try something. You may not love it, um, but you may find you love it. And, and also, like, I think that the sexier things out there that everyone thinks that they want are not always as, as expected. And some of the things that you don't think are what you want to do, when you try it, you actually go, well, actually, I really do enjoy this. So I, I totally agree with that. I think try something different and then decide rather than making a, a, an assumption before you go into it. Christian, what are the things that you look for when you're recruiting in your direct reports into your team? Oh, goodness. Um, so th there's a set number of, of skill sets that I'm always looking for. And so um, communication skills is always gonna be at the top of the list. You're managing relationships. Um, and so such a big part of uh, everything you do in treasury is about um, managing relationships, being able to communicate with not only with other teams, but externally. Um, that right, having that ability to explain um, technical concepts very simply to your senior leadership um, to help them understand the decisions that you're making. I would say um, curiosity, um, somebody who always wants to learn. Um, and I think that goes in, in with um, what I've always felt like um, is so important that continuous improvement. Um, if we're not always looking for better um, and better ways to do things, um, we're going to get left behind. And, and I think most companies have embraced that. And so it's important for most companies, for treasury folks to, to embrace it as well. It's very, um, there's so much we can do in our processes and we do tend to sometimes get stuck in maybe an old spreadsheet that's just not working for us the way we, do, we, we need it to. Um, so I really do look for, for people who are always going to be out there trying to find and make things better. Um, and then finally, that analytical and critical thinking. Can, can you 
um, look at a problem, figure out, you may not know everything about that problem, but figure out how to be able to approach that problem, do the research and come up with a recommendation um, that's, that makes sense and, and is appropriate to the company. And if, um, I think if you're always learning, you're gonna get better at that as well. Um, Definitely. What do you think makes a successful treasurer in the eyes of the C-suite and the board? Um, <clears throat> I would say that the C-suite and the board is, is looking for strategic thinking um, and how, the, how treasury is gonna help them reach their goals. And it's not just about financing growth. Um, it, it can be just as much about um, uh, finding process improvements, um, finding better ways to do things. Um, I think it's that forward thinking and being strategic. Uh, I would say um, communication skills, the more that the better they're able to communicate um, and communicate these, these concepts, these technical finance concepts to the board simply and succinctly um, and explain why we're, we're asking to do certain things. Um, very often you're going to the board and saying, I would like to issue um, you know, X hundred million in, in long-term debt and do a 30 year, being able to explain all of those concepts because many of the, the board members may not understand what's, uh, what's the right decision, why we think about it. Why are we going for um, a 30 year instead of maybe a 10 year when the 10 year is cheaper? Um, and, and so while we as treasury folks tend to learn those and understand them very well, um, most board members do not have that experience. And so being able to communicate that to them and manage financial risk. And it's also about managing relationships. Um, if, you know, are your banking relationships appropriate to help you um, during times of need? So if we think back to 2000 or late 2008, early 2009 or even um, the beginning of the pandemic, um, we many companies needed their bankers. Um, and so while markets opened up fairly quickly, um, not having those relationships ready to go for you and managing them well could have been disastrous. Definitely. I, I think that's one thing that's come through uh, over and over um, in my time in Treasury is it's it's the tough times when things seize up, basically, like what happened when the pandemic or the, the GFC, um, mm -hmm. that really tests your relationships, doesn't it? It does. Absolutely. One last question for you. Um, technology is changing very rapidly and the pandemic is probably bringing that forward. How do you see the role of the Treasurer changing over the next few years on the back of that tech advancement? Um, you know, to add to what we were just talking about, um, I, I think being more strategic um, and, and ha seeing these times of need ha does make companies really understand the value of treasury. Um, and so I think we're gonna see not just with technology, but with these, these times of need, treasury having a larger seat at the table or a more, um, broader seat at the table working within the company um, and working with other groups, um, being more strategic, helping us, helping all teams to manage financial risk. I think with technology, and I, I'm very excited for RPA um, and what it can do, uh, we're going to see a lot less what I would call tactical work and a lot more strategic work doing, you know, what are the right decisions for the company um, where you're really thinking more long-term and it's less about doing the day-to-day. -day. And so that's where I see um, the role of the treasurer expanding um, as well as um, uh, in a way of simplifying um, by, by taking away some of those. Definitely. A lot more uh, enjoyable, fun stuff and less of yes. the, uh, the boring mundane, which is, uh, which is always good to know. Well, Christian, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure chatting today. Really look forward to working with you again in the future. All right. Thank you.